of your home, then others can know about your wife and children. You know, everybody will not relate with This is Krishna. Masi, he opened his door for you. Because you left everything for him, he gives you radical letters to you, that you are aware that you are Darcy of Radhika. She will teach how to love this Because she is one point, others are not one point. This one pointedness comes by. If one cherishes this desire, one will indeed be able to spend one's whole life in this mood. For life, twenty-four seven you can be. Only the feeling. We live in the feeling. And we can live in this feeling whole life. This is the grass. We got it in the Sit down now. Swamini wears a thin sari, not covering her head with her veil. She is in her own home, saying, Tulasi, go now, feed him nicely, and then come back. Read again from beginning the visit. Swami, Swamini wears a thin sari. No, from beginning, where today you start. Oh. The practicing devotee 
should awaken feelings like, Oh, will I not get such affection from you even one day in my life? My heart cries for getting that affection. Have mercy and keep me at the feet of your Rupa and your Tulasi. All they are giving affection, affectionless feeling of love, with their love they give. They believe us that I am a right candidate for them. And we need affection, that is a spiritual and devotional. Crying like this, the sadhaka will faint and bring down the shower of Swami's mercy. But there are not the peace. Why we say there are not the peace? There are the peace. I never cry for this. I cry for different things in life. because we have missing affection. Yeah, we don't cry for this way. We don't cry for this way. We got no affection. At least I can speak for myself. Like that. That's the missing. When we have no desire for that, we cannot cry and we are not cry unless we have no effect. Sri Radha. So we have to cry. Mm-hmm. Learn to cry. Learn to learn to cry. And who cry, we need to associate those people. It's really affectionate. Mm-hmm. For some, one point. Mm. How do you recognize a person who is crying? Rupa Raghunath will give. Why not I associate with Rupa and Raghunath? Why I will search? We have all the. My heart cries for getting that affection. Have mercy and keep me at the feet of your Rupa and your Tulsi. Why two sides? If you have Guru, why two sides? Why not two kids? If you have a Rupa and Raghunath, why two sides? No, he will tease me. Mm. If he is at the same goal in life, mm. 
to have skin growth. He's dying for the affection. I try in this material world, I cannot get any place. He's all there using me, but not affection. So I will be affection, I will keep there. So I will be rich with affection to give others. Because you are connected with the power of affection, Radhika. So automatic affection will flow more and more to you. So there is a need for us to cultivate this. Yeah. This has to do. A conscious effort in our part. Our nature to search, and we have to search. When you, will, you have and you are searching outside, then we waste time only for that and may not go for the goal. We have to fix goal and wait and watch when our affection will reach. Until I will associate your close who is full of affection, that they will show me what is a beautiful thing, how much they are getting with your affection. Yeah. Crying like this, the sadhaka will faint and bring down the shower of Swamini's mercy. How mercifully Swamini keeps the maidservant at her chest. Such compassion as the maidservants enjoy cannot be found anywhere else. O oh, Swamini, I want to spend my whole life with the awareness that I am your maidservant. If one cherishes this desire, one will indeed be able to spend one whole life, one, one's whole life in this mood. Sure. Oh Swami, I want to spend my whole life with the awareness that I am your maidservant. If one cherishes this desire, one will indeed be able to spend one's whole life in this mood. This is the beach. Come and sit. Yeah. Mm. They were coming for lollipops. They were looking for lollipops. Take banana and give to them. Swamini wears a thin sari, not covering her head with her veil. She is in her own home, saying, Tulasi, go now, feed him nicely, and then come back. You all know that I am controlled by my superiors. 
My superior or watching, I am in control of. I cannot do what I like. But you do for me. Bring it. Forget now. This way we got the service. A mercy of the obstacle is the reason of the dasi to help her. This was not in Goloka. There was no obstacle because they are the married couple and they are the Lord themselves. But when they appear here, Yoga Maya creates obstacle for meeting to Krishna. So this was a speciality in Braja. That way to help Jiva of living world suffering with material world for them to help. To develop the feelings for her. So Parakya Rasa does not exist in Govatam? No. They are married couple. Mm. <laughs> married couple has no problem for meeting and no need to help for the dashis and animals. When they like to meet, they can meet. Here, Ragna Das Goswami is uh, envisioning Leela in Parajabhumi, Nile Festival. Yeah. Yes. So when he's asking for service, is he asking for service here or in the eternal world? Hmm? When he's asking for service, when he's asking to let him also... So how many service? Here, there, no. Doesn't matter. Okay. I'm here, I can ask her hmm. where she exists. Where she goes, we will go. Right? Your servant means to go where you want to go. I cannot control you if I am a servant. You go, I go with you. But I need your servant. I need your uh, affection to become like an affection. Yeah, 
you all know that I am controlled by my superiors. I cannot go myself. When you keep your chest to mine, then you will understand. Look into my eyes once. Then she holds Tulasi to her chest and lovingly hands her the dishes for her pranata. What an excellent service this is. The Goswamis cried for such service with breaking hearts. I have to serve Shama while my heart is merged in Swamini's heart and my eyes have merged in her eyes. Why is he put that uh, dasi to the chest? Because you are my heart. You know my heart feeling. I am in difficult situation, I cannot do. But you should do because you are like a... I have a love like a heart to heart to you. You can give the same feeling of me to my love. You are my chest. She embraces in the chest. Breast. And she looks and penetrates the love in her eyes. to develop the feelings similar like her inside of her. Who can do that? Such a sweet service cannot be found anywhere. As soon as Tulasi takes the plates from Swamini's hands, she does not feel anything anymore. What a heart-rending agony she feels when the vision stops. Raghunatha pitifully cries, Oh Swamini, when will you send your preparations to Krishna through me? Sri Haripada Srila sings, He Varoru Sri Radhike Govinda Mohini Gosteshwari Yashodara Agnya Bhayatami Babu Vida Sumishtamna Nama Paramartha Apani prastuta kauri nija vicha mata. O oh, nicely tied Sri Radhike, O oh, enchantress of Govinda, <coughs> when you receive the order from Goshteshwari Yashoda, you prepare many kinds of sweets named Paramartha according to your own wish. In his Manjari Swarupa, Raghunatha Dasa says, When will that blessed day come when you will place these dishes in the hands of Lalita and your other sakis, or even in my hands? When can I blissfully carry these four kinds of delicious foodstuffs and place them into Mother Yashoda's hands. Verse number 47. O Bhavye, beautiful auspicious girl, when will the Queen of Raja, as I bring her the sweets, hold her forehead 
on my forehead in loving joy as if she is my mother and inquire about your well-being knowing me to be yours notes in a divine mission Sri Raghunatha perceived his devotional service and now that the vision is gone he prays in this way it goes on continuously Sri Radhika sends Tulsi off to Nandishwara with sweets for Krishna when Tulsi arrives at Nandishwara she keeps the plate with eatables on a proper place and bows down to mother yashoda mother yashoda embraces tulasi affectionately holds her forehead on tulasi's forehead and asks her about radhika's welfare shri radhika is called bhagya here or auspicious girl she who works for krishna's welfare ma yashoda loves radhika as much as her own mother kirtida does and sri raghunatha dasa says she loves radhika as much as she loves krishna even how much mother yashoda loves radharani Sri Rupa Goswami has written she is loved by Achyuta's mother it was only 7 or 8 hours since radhika was at nandishwara to cook krishna's breakfast yet mother yashoda is already very anxious about her welfare how much yashoda loves the maid servants knowing them to belong to shri radha she knowing loves, knowing them to belong to shri radha yeah. if we belongs to shri radha all krishna mother krishna everyone close to krishna they all start so that is the mother of krishna but she love radhika like her as krishna mm-hmm. why because radhika like very much love very much that was the reason behind of mother yashoda to give too much in the nature of she loves them as if she is their own mother upar yahan ke naya wala king she loves them as if she is their own mother shri raghunatha dasa who floats on the waves of prayer directly perceives this past time within his heart 
through their own example, the Acharyas have shown that one must be very eager to attain one's beloved Lord. The devotee should never think, whatever I do, I am satisfied with it. In the nature of devotion, that one is never satisfied, satiated with it. In the Brihat Bhagavatam Rita, Srila Sanatana Goswami describes how Narada Muni prayed for the following boon. O oh, Sri Krishna Chandra, may by your mercy nobody can ever be set satiated with their love and devotion for you, for you are transcendental bliss personified. Sri Krishna replied, O oh, teacher of all clever arts, what kind of boon do you seek from me? My devotion, my mercy, and my love are naturally inexhaustible. You have wandered around everywhere, starting from Prayagatirtha, hearing about my devotees and seeing them. They are all the objects of my mercy. They have all their desires fulfilled and they can deliver the whole world. Although you see that there are different levels of them, you cannot see that any one of them is ever satiated with their devotion to me. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, please pray for another boon to me. The devotee should know that this bhajan is in a deceased state if he feels satiated in his sadhana. Wow. One can measure one's advancement and taste for bhajan in this way, in which one is greedy, eager, and unsatisfied with spiritual flavors. How eager Sri Rupa and Raghunatha were. Hearing it, even a stone heart will melt. Sri Rupa Goswami said, You are Sukhamaya and Sukhamayi. You are always absorbed in blissful pastimes. I thought I would not show you how my heart is burning. But I cannot keep from telling you anymore. See how your Rupa's heart is burning. Udkhalika Vallari, text one. All the pastime places are still here, right before my eyes. And even today, these pastimes are going on. But I don't get any response. Your pastimes are not floating upon my eyes. A devotee should wander around like mad in this way. Sri Rupa and Raghunatha stayed under different trees every night just to experience the different spiritual pastimes that Radha and Krishna were performing at each place. When the devotee is in Raja, he should feel even now your pastimes are going on here. Why can I not see them? Please let me see what pastimes are going on now. Let me be so fortunate. Why can't I see Vrindavana as your real actual playground? Sri Raghunatha has chosen Sri Radha's dearmost playground, Sri Radha Kunda as his place of worship. And by the mercy of the Kunda, he directly perceives all of her transcendental pastimes. Now he is not Raghunatha, he is Tulasi Manjari. Mother Yashoda holds her forehead on my forehead and asks me about Sri Radhika's welfare, saying, how is my Radhika? Will I not even experience one drop of this affection? The neophyte devotees 
should lament like this also. Ma Yashoda loves the Kinkaris so much because she knows that they belong to Sri Radha. Radha Rani's affection is infused in her maidservants. And when Mother Yashoda sees them, she is as happy as when she sees Radha Rani herself. Blessed is Sri Radha's service. The devotees should eagerly wander from forest to forest of Raja, crying and crying, O oh, hey, Vrindavana, O oh, Vrindavana's inhabitants, O oh, Vrindavana's sky, wind, trees, vines, deer and birds, let everyone know that I am Radha's maid servant. Please, you all be kind to me. Make this consciousness within me very firm. O oh, Radhe, where are you? This whole forest is illuminated by your golden splendor. Keep me spiritually alive with just one drop of this luster. I don't have anyone else but you. You are famous throughout the three worlds for being so compassionate on the fallen and unfortunate souls. Hearing this from the mouths of the sadhus, I have joyfully taken shelter of you. Please don't let me down. You are my only shelter. I am living in Vrindavana, the kingdom of devotional enthusiasm, but I am simply engrossed in bodily consciousness. How unfortunate am I? When I hear and chant the great words of the Acharyas, I will certainly attain that devotional eagerness. Then I will wander from forest to forest, crying, Where are you, O Radharani? Your golden luster illuminates the whole of Vrindavana. My mind and eyes subsist on a mere drop of this luster. Day and night, there will be only this prayer in my heart. Hari Hari, when will the day be mine when I can touch their bodies, see them and serve them? I will blissfully render service with Lalita and Vishaka, stringing garlands of different flowers. I will fill up a golden basket with camphor and beetle leaves and place them on their lips. Radha and Krishna and Vrindavana are the treasure of my heart and the means of my subsistence. All glories to the Savior of the Fallen. Please give me this treasure. I don't want anything else but this. This is the pure experience of the Acharyas. I don't want anything else but this. We should also stay in the Vrajavana in this mood, not having a liking for anything else. But unfortunately, a soul like me likes many other things, despite living in Vrajavana. Profit, adoration, distinction, money and whatnot. Where will I find this treasure of my heart? for whom I have given up everything to come to Vraja. Radha Krishna, there is no other hope than their mercy. Tulasi enjoys Mother Yashoda's affection. Mother Yashoda engages Sri Radhika in cooking for her Gopala because she knows that it will increase his lifespan, his health, and his beauty. This purpose is clearly visible in her eyes. How much mindness she feels for the eatables that were cooked by Radhika's own hands. Mother Yashoda is Gopala's Kalyana Karini. She who arranges for Gopala's welfare. This is clearly visible in her eyes. 
Tulasi understands her mood and thus calls Radhika Bhavye, she who works for Krishna's welfare. Tulasi's heart is filled with Mother Yashoda's affection and Sri Radhika's great glories and this makes her very proud. Suddenly, the divine vision vanishes and anxiously Raghunatha Dasa falls on the bank of Radha Kunda and prays for devotion service. Sri Rasika Chandra Dasa sings, O Radhike, you are the very form of auspiciousness. Receiving your order, I will take different kinds of sweets and go to Nandarani, Queen Yashoda. Mother Yashoda will blissfully put everything away and then place her forehead on my forehead with full of affection as if she is my mother. Then she will inquire about your welfare, knowing me to be your girlfriend. That's verse 47. Verse 48. O Devi, Goddess, when will I most affectionately bring the remnants from Krishna's lotus-like mouth that were given to me by Danishta before you? Notes. How wonderful is Sri Raghunatha's devotional service in full Swarupa Vesha. On Swamini's order, Tulasi has gone to Nandishwara to serve Shamasundara her own cooked dishes there. After Shamsundra has eaten, Mother Yashoda lovingly gives some of his sweet remnants to Tulsi so that she can bring them to Swami. Danishta had secretly mixed some of Krishna's Adharamrita, lip nectar, or food remnants in it. Sri Krishna knew what Danishta wanted. So, while giving her a hint with her with his eyes, he spat some food out as if he did not like it. Danishta picked that food up and mixed it with the sweets that Yashoda had reserved for Sri Radhika. Danishta is responsible for all devotional services at Nandishwara, as is Kundalata. Both of them are very attached to the loving pair. <laughs> they know what is on their minds and they render their services in secret, unnoticed by others. All this can only be understood by awakening one's Swarupa. A person who is absorbed in bodily consciousness is not qualified to render these confidential services to the Sri Yuga. How deeply Sri Dasa Goswami is absorbed in his Varupa. How vividly he experiences these services. Can the sadhaka continue when he does not even experience a little kind of this devotional service? How I wasted such a pure life with all kinds of external dealings. When will I cry for Swamini with a breaking heart? I am yours and no one else's. I cannot live without you and therefore I pray to you. O oh Devi, if you know this, then be so merciful and take me to your lotus feet, making me your maidservant. My heart is always open for she who is millions of times dearer to me than my own heart. I must surely get a response from her. To whom else shall I speak of my feelings? I don't have anyone else in this world. This desire must be very strong. The activities of the Acharyas is the target. Srila Rupa Goswami cried out, O Radhe, O Krishna, the lakes of your minds 
are filled with nectar streams of deep compassion. Be pleased with this wicked soul. Please show me the luster of love that is a guarantee of seeing you. Why is Rati the guarantee? Srila Vishwanatha Chakravarti writes that when Rati appears, the devotee's feeling of I-ness, self-identification, enters into the spiritual body, which is fit for the execution of devotional service. And it is as if he leaves his material devotee body. The feeling of mindness then turns into a bumblebee that is very thirsty for the honey that trickles from the Lord's lotus feet. The Acharyas are in the kingdom of Mahabhava. Holding straws between their teeth, they are loudly crying, I cannot tolerate this waiting anymore. Quickly make the tree of my aspirations bear fruit. In this way, they cry out for Swamini and call her. How merciful the Acharyas are for recording their transcendental experiences in their books. If Swamini's mercy comes from, the, from within their smarana or their experiences, then we will sell our hearts to their lotus feet. Sri Raghunatha Dasa eagerly cries out, O oh my lords, Rupa and Sanatana, the worship of Raja is one of faithful allegiance because the goddess of Vaikuntha, Kamala Devi, did not accept the mood of Raja. She could not attain Govinda's devotional service despite performing so many austerities. By following in the footsteps of the gopis, the Upanishads and the sages of Dandaka forest attained the service of Sri Krishna. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is described, the Upanishads all follow the gopis. Accepting the mood of the gopis, they worshipped the son of the queen of Raja and thus attained a place in the gopi group in Raja. In these bodies, they could associate with Krishna in the Rasa Lila. Krishna is born amongst the cow herders and the gopis are his beloveds. Krishna does not accept goddesses or any other kind of women for his consorts. The goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, wanted to unite with Krishna in her self-same body, but she did not worship, worship him in allegiance to the gopi, gopikas. In other bodies, other than a gopi body, the Rasalila cannot be attained. Therefore, Veda Vyasa spoke the verse, Nayam Shriyo Anga Nitanda Rate Prasada Allegiance to the gopis reaches perfection in hearing, chanting, and remembering the eager prayers of the Acharyas. That is why it is called an internal sadhana. Meanwhile, in Yavat, after sending Tulasi to Nandishwara, Sri Radhika has fainted out of powerful feelings of separation from Krishna, and the Sakis are unable to bring her back to her senses. Then Tulasi comes back from Nandishwara. Even cool things like lotus stems, lotus pollen, ushira, camphor, sandal paste, and lotus flowers were not able to bring down Gandharvika's hot fever of separation from Krishna. Just then, one Saki, Tulasi, came from Nandishwara and began to sprinkle her ear holes with the drops of nectar like stories about Krishna being ordered by Lalita. Sri Radhika immediately comes back to her senses, sits down and says, O Saki, in my dream, 
my desert-like ears suddenly felt a shower of nectar. Dalita says, O oh, fair face Saki, it is Tulasi Manjri who has come back from the abode of the Queen of Raja. She has brought you back to your senses by sprinkling you with the nectar of your friend Krishna's pastimes. Swamini sees Tulasi before her and embraces her. Swamini has an extraordinary love for Tulasi. She knows that Tulasi has come back after serving her wholeheartedly. Again, Tulasi serves her Swamini in an extraordinary way by sprinkling her ears with the nectar of Krishna's afternoon pastimes. Swamini asks Tulasi, What did Mother Yashoda say? Tulasi says, Hey, Shyamaju, how can I describe Mother Yashoda's affection as she held her forehead on mine, calling me your maidservant? Lovingly, she held her forehead on my forehead and inquired about your welfare, intoxicated by ecstatic love. How much the love, how much love the Queen of Raja gave me, knowing me to be yours. Swamini pulls Tulasi on her lap and repeatedly asks her, He has eaten nicely, hasn't he? I couldn't cook so nicely. I am sure he didn't like my sweets. You were close by, weren't you? Swamini thoroughly questions Tulasi, and fortunate Tulasi gives sweet answers to all the questions, thus rendering a wonderful service by submerging Swamini in the nectar ocean of talks about Krishna. By the way, Danishta has given me some remnants of Krishna's food and, and brought it with me for you. Sri Radhika is like a chataki bird that does not eat anything else but the nectar from Krishna's lips. As soon as she hears, she hears about this nectar, the thirst of her ears and her heart is immediately quenched. Didn't he say anything else to you? She asked Tulsi. How can he in front of his superiors? Tulsi answers. With his eyes, he asked me if he could meet you tonight in Vrindavana, and I told him, also with the hints from my eyes, surely you will meet her. Swamini says, Tulsi, look at me once. I am so unfortunate that I could not see him personally. Let me see if he is hidden in your eyes or not. And she gazes in Tulsi's eyes without blinking. Her eyes are full of tears and her body is shivering of ecstatic love. When I look into your eyes, I can understand that you have seen him. Other eye, otherwise, your eyes could never have been so beautiful. Swami says, What a wonderful service Tulasi is rendering by carrying Krishna's picture to Swami in her eyes. Blessed is this maidservant. Now Srimati starts to take her meal. How wonderful is Tulasi's expertise in devotion service. Sri Banga Bihari Vidyalankara writes, Sri Radhika is called Devi in this text because she is the eternal consort of Deva Achita. Srimad Bhagavata ends with Devanam Achito Yatha. Of all the gods, Achita, the infallible Sri Krishna, is the greatest. Therefore, of all the goddesses, Sri Radhika is also the greatest. Sri Haripada Sila sings, O Gunavati, qualified girl Radhe, O my mistress, I pray to you so fervently, when will Sri Danishta, your dearest girlfriend, most carefully hand me Krishna's food remnants? When will I carry Krishna's remnants on my head and place them before you? When will I fill my eyes with the sweet vision of Unmadini, love intoxicated Roy, seeing and smelling the prasada? Text 49. <laughs> 
slowly. So. Oh, Kunkumangi. Her first body shines like vermilion. When will I carefully serve you the many kinds of remnants left by Krishna that are like an elixir of the quintessence of nectar mixed with other eatables and drinks. As you sit down, surrounded by Lalita and other girlfriends. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. Oh, Kunkumangi, girl whose body shines like vermilion, when will I care- carefully serve you the many kinds of remnants left by Krishna that are like an elixir of the quintessence of nectar mixed with other eatables and drinks as you sit down surrounded by Lalita and other girlfriends. In a transcendental vision, Sri Raghunatha sees Swamini's sweet Bhojana Leela, eating pastimes. Tulasi has brought Shyama's Adharamrata. Lip nectar or food remnants. Lip nectar. Lip nectar. And for Tazo. In the same way. We are taking Prithadi lip nectar of Radha and Krishna. Other Amrita. Other lip nectar. In Hindi. Other Amrita. Even a fiber of Madhana Mohana's Adharamrita is Sukriti Labhya Fela Lava, only attainable by a lot of pious merit. Krishna's food remnants are called Pela, and anyone who gets even a fiber of it is very lucky. These remnants are not available through ordinary luck. Only a person who has gotten Krishna's full mercy gets it. The word Sukriti here means merit which is attained by Krishna's personal mercy. A person who gets this Pela is greatly fortunate. This prasada is relishable according to one's amount of love for Krishna. Radha Rani loves Krishna the most and therefore she also relishes his prasada to the utmost. O oh, Saki, how much you will love, you will end it by Oh, Saki, this Madhana Mopna increases the yearning of my tongue. How Srimati relishes this nectar is best understood from Chaitanya Charitamrita, which describes how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Srimati Radhika's mood relishes Lord Jagannatha's prasada at Jagannatha Puri named Gopala Vallabha. Tasting these dishes that were millions of times more relishable than nectar, the Lord became astonished. He had loose pimples of ecstasy all over his body and tears of love 
his lord from his eyes. He thought to himself, Where has such a delicious food come from? Krishna's lip nectar is infused in it. Mahaprabhu relished a little of this food and then told Govinda to tie the rest in the end of his dhoti and take it along. The whole day, Mahaprabhu was deeply absorbed in Krishna's Adharamrata. When the evening came, one star-like devotee after the other came to surround the golden Gaura moon and a stream of Krishna Kata took its rise. On the Lord's indication, Govinda began to distribute the prasada that he kept in his robe to everyone present. The Lord then began to explain the glories of the prasada. The Lord said, These ingredients like cane sugar, camphor, black pepper, cardamom, cloves, ghee, spices, and liquors are all material. Everyone has tasted them before, but now these dishes have an extraordinary taste and fragrance. Everyone should taste it and experience the difference. What to speak of the taste, even the fragrance, is maddening and makes one forget all other sweetnesses but its own. The nectar of Krishna's lips have touched it and has infused the qualities of these lips in the food. The attributes of Krishna's lips are greatly intoxicating and their extraordinary fragrance and taste make one forget all other experiences. Just as Sri Radhika secretly relishes the nectar of Krishna's lips with her sakis, Mahaprabhu relished this nectar in secret with Sri Swarupa Damodara and Sri Ramananda Rai. O oh, hero, listen to the nature of your lips. They agitate the body and mind, increase lusty desires, and destroy all other sentiments like joy and sorrow. They make one forget all other flavors. They control the whole world and destroy saintly qualities such as shyness, religiousness, and patience. They destroy shyness, religious thoughts, religious people. is also one block. The blood of the blood. They madden the minds of the women, attract the tongue, and turn all situations upside down. This may be the work of women, but I am ashamed to say that your lips are so bold that they even attract your flute, which is male. They make it drink as much nectar as they like and make it forget all other flavors. What to speak of conscious beings? They make even unconscious beings conscious. Your lips are great magicians. Your flute is just a dry piece of wood, but your lips give it a mind and sense and senses and make it drink themselves. This flute is a bold male who drinks 
the lips of another man, telling the gopis, Oh gopis, listen, drink your property by force if you think you can. Then the flute angrily told me, Give up your shame, fear, and religion, and come to drink the nectar of Krishna's lips. On that condition, I shall give them up. If you don't give up your attachments to virtue, I will keep on drinking it forevermore. I am a little afraid of you gopis, for you may have the power to compete with me. But all others I consider to be no more than blades of grass. Oh, listen to the manners of these lips and other injustices. Everything that is touched by these lips, like food and drinks, becomes just like nectar and is called Krishna Pela. Even the demigods cannot get one drop of this Pela. Who can fathom the pride of this Pela? By performing pious activities for many births, one becomes known as a virtuous man, and such a person may get a fiber of this Pela. Fortunate Tulasi makes Bhava Mai and her Sakis relish Krishna's lip nectar. The devotees will be consoled by the remembrance of these pastimes. The all enchanting nature of Radhika's names, forms, qualities, and pastimes cause the experience of sweetness, and this takes the consciousness forwards. The forms, qualities, and pastimes of the beloved deity then become the quintessence of a devotee's life. Absorbed in experiencing Shama Sundara's sweetness, Sri Lila Sukha told him, O oh Lord, you are my giver of love. The full you are my giver of love, the fulfiller of my desires, the bestower of devotional knowledge, and the treasure of my heart. You and no one else are my life and my fate. To this Sri Krishna said, Very well, Lila Sukha, very well. I have become very pleased with your loyalty to me. My darshana will never be in vain for you. Please pray for a boon to me. Then Lila Shuka prayed for the following boon. May our words be increased by your sweetness. May you increase the stream of our thoughts so that we will be able to remember the sweetness of your naughty adolescence. The words of the Acharyas are the support for the weak devotees. They will remove their bodily consciousness and bring them into a deep spiritual consciousness in which they can relish the sweetness of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Tulasi says, O oh, Kumkumambi, I will serve you different kinds of nectarian food and drinks while you assemble with your girlfriends to taste the nectar of Krishna's lips. Swami's bodily luster now resembles fresh kumkuma from Kashmir touched 
with some sand or paste. It's a reddish glow that comes out from within her, showing her heart's passion for Krishna. Passion is symbolized by red color. That is why Tulasi calls her Kunkamangi here. Sri Bhangabihari Vidyalankara adds, her body turned gray because of waiting for Krishna's meal and to conceal this grayness, she is anointed with Kunkuma. In each dish, Swamini tastes the nectar of Krishna's lips. When Swamini tastes Krishna's nectarian food remnants, it is as if she touches his lips directly because the food has taken all their qualities. The maid servants feed Krishna Premon Madini, she who is mad with love for Krishna. Radhika, who remembers so many pastimes she had with Krishna at that time. She closes her eyes half when she is immersed in such sweet remembrance. It is as if she is drifting off somewhere else. The Kinkaris make her relish according to her feelings. Dalita and the Sakis also keep her to enter the Shama Ocean by joking with her about her divine pastimes with Krishna. Nagara Krishna makes himself useful by becoming the subject of these emotional talks. What more can he attain than this? No words can express how sweet, effulgent, and beautiful Srimati Radhika is. She makes even Krishna's life useful. That is why Krishna became greedy for her moon. And that is why he came in the golden form of Gaura. To float in this rasa itself and to make the whole world float in it con concomitantly. Sri Radhika does not relish the eatables. She only relishes the nectar of Krishna's lips, while her mind is absorbed in remembering her extraordinary pastimes with him. In the Kunja pastimes, she directly relishes this lake nectar. How many hundreds of loving moons doesn't she express through her eyes and her face then? Tulasi carefully feeds Swamini because she knows that she experiences Shamasundra's presence in the dishes. She feeds Swamini according to the pastime flavors she makes her relish. Swamini is mad with love for Krishna. Is it so easy to serve her? When Lord Chaitanya, who was greedy after the ecstatic love of Sri Radha, relished this pastime in the Gambira, he stared at Sarupadamadras and Ramananda Raya's faces and said, Where have you brought me? How many wonderful feelings he expressed through his face and his eyes. Swarupa and Ramaraya understood the Lord's mind and helped him relish these pastimes. Yeah. 
Swarupa Damodara sang songs of Vidyapati and from Gita Govinda that soothed the Lord's ears. Tulasi understands Swamini's mind completely and she carefully feeds her accordingly. Srila Raghunatha Dasa Goswami has mercifully left the remnants of his transcendental revelations on paper for the practicing devotee of today. Alas, whatever is understandable, having received the mercy of such a great Acharya, I do not understand. And whatever now, whatever can now be logged within the heart, I do not log within my heart. Sri Raghunath Dasa has offered himself to Swamini's feet. Sri Radhika, who is mad with love for Krishna, has now relished the nectar of Krishna's lips. Suddenly, the vision vanishes, and Sri Raghunath pitifully prays, O Kumkumangi, O Gaurangi, O oh, daughter of Rishabhanu, how wonderfully you are sitting in your wonderful jeweled temple, surrounded by your guru friends, like Lalita, looking at the nectar that emanates from Krishna's lips. I will bring the Mahaprasada on jeweled plates while everyone's mind is reading of ecstasy. When can I feed you and your sakis and fill my eyes with your sweet vision? Yeah. I you see. Feed you. I, I understand the moon, but I don't know. The new one takes time. This is the region of Mahaprabhu. This is the region of Krishna coming to this world to exchange the love and give teachers. One may be him, not a philosopher. Make it easy that in every action when you take prasad, you feel like when is anything is happening, you do like this with this way. Link grow with going. It's not that you listen and it will grow. And every moment you have to feed it. And what you listen, you will not forget. When for start will come, one time feeling will come. And if you want to respect, then take that. That mercy will start going. It's not med- sitting and meditation. It's all happening there, story. Hmm? So in my life, every day something. And we have to be in that. Rati, 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 Rati.